Let's add custom blocks to Minecraft. All right, we found some pack and shell once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding custom blocks to Minecraft Forge 119.3. And let's just jump right in. So in our tutorial mod package, we're going to right click new package block. And there we're going to make a new Java class called the mod blocks class. Now the general structure of this class is going to be very, very similar to the mod items class. The first thing we'll need is a public static final. The third register, once again, this one from net Minecraft forge registries, just hit the tab key to autocomplete. And then we want an angle bracket inside of there. We want to write block making sure that net Minecraft world block is selected and then hitting tab. If for whatever reason, the import does not happen automatically and the block here is red, you can just click on it, press alt and enter. And then once again, making sure you choose net Minecraft world level block and not Nashorn internal IR, very, very important. So just make sure that the correct block class is imported and then we can call this blocks. And this is equal to a deferred register once again, dot create forge registries once again i'm just always auto completing with the tab key dot blocks comma tutorial mod dot mod id and then there you go and now what we want to do is we also want a public static void register method with an i event bus called event bus and inside of there we're going to call blocks dot register passing in the event bus now to register blocks properly we actually need two helper methods for this and the first one is going to be a private static and now it's going to look very very crazy but don't worry it actually is not too bad we're going to make a angle bracket here t extends block and then we're going to say registry object this one right here just autocomplete with tab angle brackets instead of there we're going to say item and then this is the register block item method with a string name and a registry object of type T called block. This insanity right here, if you're a beginner in Java, this is called generics. And it basically just means that this registry object, right, which basically holds our item. And then this registry object, which holds T, we're basically just saying, hey, this T can be anything that is a block. That's the general idea. So don't get too hung up on this at this point. It is an advanced Java technique. So I highly do recommend if this is something where you're like, okay, I do want to know how this works. I highly do recommend looking up at uh, generics in Java. Uh, however, it is a more advanced technique. So if you're still a beginner, you should go through some of the more basic stuff first. Anyway, instead of here, we just want to return mod items dot items dot register. And then we want to pass in the name. We want to make a supplier of a new block item in this case. Once again, hitting tab to auto complete this passing in block.get after the closing parentheses from get comma new item properties. And then we can end this with a semicolon. And there you go. That is it. That is all that we need to do in this method. And now we want a second helper method that is also going to be a private static. Once again, angle bracket extends block registry object of type T this time called register block. And this is going to be a ring parameter called name and a supplier this time of type t and this is going to be called block as well once again if this is red you can just click on this press alt and enter and we're going to use java util function right here and that should be fine now inside of here we want to make another registry object which is going to be called to return this is equal to blocks dot register passing in the name and the block parameters and then there you go now this will actually re register our block now for this block, we also want to register the block item. Hence, we're passing in the same name and the to return registry object that we've created right here. And then we're also returning the to return registry object so that this can be saved in a field. Right, so then we're going to do a public static final registry object once again, angle brackets of type block this time. And this is going to be, first of all, the black underscore opal underscore block. This is equal to register block, the method. And then once again, we're starting to type in a name. This name right here, this thing that generates automatically. You don't have to type this out. I'm only typing out the quotation marks. And inside of those quotation marks, we want the black opal block right here. And then afterwards, comma, and then a supplier of a new block. This is absolutely correct. And then the block needs some properties. So we're going to start with block behavior. Once again, autocomplete with tab dot properties dot of. And here we supply a material. The material we're going to supply for the black opal block is going to be metal. And then we're going to also call strength. So this is basically how long this takes to break and how resistant it is to 
explosions. And then if you can see, if I put a dot here in here as well, if I put another dot in here, you can see there's quite quite a few methods that we can basically call and all of those change things like speed factor. We have a sound, right? So we can change the sound when you mine this block, when you walk over this block, things like that. So there's a few things, no occlusion, no loot table, no collision, insta break. So there's a few things that you can basically call. The only thing that we still want to call is required correct tool for drop. And then we end this with a semicolon, right? And now the block has been added. Now let's not forget to call the register method in the tutorial mod class. So we want to go here, mod blocks that register passing in the mod event bus. And then also we want this block to be added to a creative mode tab. So let's just make a new if statement here. First of all, event.get tab equals to creative mode tab dot. And we're going to put this under building blocks. So we're going to say event dot accept and then mod blocks dot black opal block. And then we're just going to copy this and also add it to our tutorial tab because once again, we can add them to as many tabs as we want to. But we're not done quite just yet because of course we still need JSON files. And for the blocks, the JSON files are a little bit more complicated than for the items, but no worries, we'll still get through this. So in the block states folder, we want to right click new file. And this is the black underscore opal underscore block that JSON. And this is going to look like this. I'm once again going to write this down and then we're going to go through this. So if you first of all have variants, first of all, we have variants, colon, open curly brackets, and then a empty string, curly brackets, model, colon, Oriel mod, colon, block, slash, black, underscore, opal, underscore, block. Now, what the frick is going on here? Well, we're basically defining some variants. Now, in this case, this doesn't have any variants. This only has one variant, and that is going to be the black opal block. Now, this over here refers to a model file, right? This is a block model file that we're looking for. So we're looking in the tutorial mod assets folder, once again, in the models folder right here, in the block folder right here, and we're looking for a black underscore opal underscore block JSON file. So this is exactly what we're going to create now. So new file in there, black underscore opal underscore block dot JSON. And this is the block model JSON file. This basically determines the texture for this particular block. And it's going to have a parent. This parent is going to be Minecraft colon block slash cube underscore all, comma, textures, textures, there you go, colon, curly brackets, all, and then this is once again tutorial odd colon block slash black underscore opal underscore block. There you go. Now, what you will find is that this particular JSON file looks very, very similar to the item model JSON file. Like if we compare those, you can see they are very similar in style. And this is exactly right. So the parent right here, in this case, cube all just says, hey, how is this particular block displayed? What are the textures of each of the faces? Cube all just means that all of the faces have the same texture. Then we're once again looking for a texture in the textures folder of tutorial mod and we're then looking for a block folder and inside of there we're looking for the black underscore opal underscore block so we're just going to add this right here and then this is going to be displayed as all of the textures on all six sides now in this case the block will have a texture inside of the world but it will not have a texture inside of the inventory because to get that into the inventory we also need an item model however that one is one of the easiest ones so this is the black opal underscore opal underscore block that adjacent files and that one simply has a parent and the only thing it looks for is tutorial mod colon block slash black underscore opal underscore block and this in this case simply refers back to the block model json file right here so this just looks into the models folder into the block folder and looks for a black opal block json and then displays it in this you know in a normal 3d way that blocks are basically displayed inside of the inventory now, last but not least, we also wanted to translate the name over here. So let's just zoom in a bit. Let's just duplicate this. And then instead of an item, this is, of course, a block. It is still under tutorial mod. And this is going to be the name of the block once again, black underscore opal underscore block. And this is going to be the black opal block. Or you can also call it, you know, black block of black opal, whatever basically you want to do. And with that, we have added the block successfully. So let's just go into the game and see if it works. All right, we find ourselves back in Minecraft and let's just see, first of all, in the building blocks at the very bottom, there we go, the block of black opal. And I do really love the texture and it also is in the tutorial tab, absolutely amazing. So you can see that works. And if I set it down, it also looks freaking amazing inside of the world. So once again, to quickly troubleshoot some stuff, if the texture does not display in the world, but it does display in your inventory, then the block states JSON file is at fault. If it displays in the world, but it doesn't display in the inventory correctly, then it's the item model JSON file. And if both textures don't work, then it can be any one of those files. If neither of the textures work, 
and the name also doesn't work, then you probably have written your mod ID wrong or you've registered it under the wrong mod ID. I hope that helps you for troubleshooting, but that is pretty awesome to have added a block right here. So let's add some more. Right, we're not quite done just yet. I actually want to add several more blocks that we've seen like how to add more of them. So what I usually do is I just copy one of the existing blocks and then make sure to change everything properly. So this is going to be the black opal ore actually. And this is also going to have a different name. Now, this is not only going to be a normal block. This is actually going to be a drop experience block because in this case, I want our ore to drop experience. This is a normal thing that ore does, right? And what you can do is you can actually middle mouse button click on this and you can see the actual class. This is the actual Java class from Minecraft itself that uses the drop experience block. Now you can see we're currently using this constructor right here, which would not drop nothing. This is, of course, not what we want. So we want to add a, another parameter into the drop experience block constructor, and that is an int provider. So we're just going to say uniform, uniform int dot of, and we're going to pass in something like, let's say, uh, between two and six, something like that. Now for the vanilla values, what you can do, let's go back to the drop experience block, and we can just middle mouse button click on this. And then what you will find is every instance, this particular class has been used. So for example, we're like, well, you know what? I want this to be exactly like the lapis block so, or the lapis ore. So we go into the blocks class and you can see in line 132, if we just zoom out here a little bit, the uniform of two to five. Okay, that's pretty good. Two to six. I think that that is pretty okay. And these are all of the blocks. So this is a incredibly useful thing, right? So middle mouse button click on classes that are from either Forge or from Minecraft itself can basically open up a lot of stuff for you. Right, for the sake of argument, let's just duplicate this four times. And then we also have a deep slate underscore black opal ore. So that's going to be slate. Make sure to always change the names right here. Because once again, if the names are the same, that is actually going to lead to the game not working. Then we have netherrack underscore black opal ore. And we also have endstone underscore black opal ore. Once again, changing the names here. Very, very important. Netherrack underscore. And then here it is endstone underscore. And then also we want to change the material to stone because, well, this is stone, right? Like all of the ore blocks are really stone. They're not real metal. And then we can, for example, also change maybe some of the strengths, right? So some of the things are a little bit easier to mine. Maybe netherrack is a little bit easier to mine and then endstone is the hardest to mine. There you go. Now, what's also incredibly important, please note this. You will not be able to mine those blocks with any tool right now, and they will not drop anything. That's something we're going to do in the next tutorial. Right now, the question will be, well, for all of those four blocks, do we still need to add all of those JSON files? That is indeed correct. Now, I already have all of those prepared, but if you take a look at them, they are pretty much exactly the same, just changing whatever it basically refers to. Now, all of those JSON files, as well as all of the code, is of course available to you in the description below as a download and also as a GitHub repository, so no worries there at all. But I just wanted to mention this. So yes, you will have to do those every time. However, we will later in this tutorial series, we will see a way of generating those automatically. And then you don't have to type everything out and duplicate them and all of that. So that would be pretty awesome indeed. All right, so here we have the translations, right? Nothing too crazy. I mean, at this point, the pattern should be pretty obvious, like what it is, right? So nothing too insane over here. And then the block model JSON files, right? These are all the item model JSON files. And then last but not least, the textures, of course. And there you go. And of course, everything here is available in the description below, GitHub repository, and there you go. So that would be pretty much all of that. Let's also add them to a creative mode tab. So let's just add them to the building blocks. I, I mean, I guess, is there another one? Maybe let's actually, like an ore, no colored blocks. It's not really a colored block. Um, OP blocks, it's also not an OP block. It might be natural blocks. I feel like that, that could work. Let's just duplicate all of this. And then say this is the natural blocks rid of this this one in here netherrack this is the instone or slate or black opal ore. there you go and we'll also add all four of them right here i just selected press ctrl c and then ctrl v to paste it in and there we go now all of those ores should be added to the game as well so just for completion sake let's go to the game and see if it works all right finds us back in minecraft again and let's just see and there we go all of our different blocks have been added let's just set a couple of them down there you go beautiful so all of them are added and they should also be added to the natural blocks so let's see there you go they're also there absolutely freaking awesome and well that's pretty much how easy it is to add a boatload of uh, blocks to minecraft and that's gonna be it for this tutorial right here thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all next time so yeah